Hello everyone, Brian here. Today we'll be looking at this succulent planter and some of the succulents that are growing in it. Uh, for those of us who enjoy succulents, growing them, collecting them, the appeal is in finding, it's like a treasure hunt where you go out to the nurseries or the wholesalers or even the online stores and you look through the entire inventory to find that one succulent that you find really appealing and you don't yet have and to bring it home and to add it to your collection. Um, they, they range in many types of, of um, shapes and colors and, and all that stuff. And as far as uh, the hobby, uh, you can get really to the enthusiast level and also collect the very unique looking pots and pot them accordingly. Uh, we're not there yet, we're, we're just planting them in the planter um, pots. They, um, this is more of a poor man's succulent garden rather than, a, than an enthusiast's garden. Um, we'll be looking at some of the succulents, doing some maintenance to this planter, and then we'll go and plant some of the succulents that we remove into a pot. Uh, my sister-in-law asked me to make her a succulent um, potting arrangement, I, I guess, and she she provided the pot as well as the potting mix. When I, when I make the arrangements, I normally use um, clay soil, but uh, the, the potting mix, I, I suppose, will just make everything a lot uh, smoother as far as um, just getting everything going. So we'll start on this end and look at some of the succulents. The ones that I don't know the names of or have a hard time pronouncing, I'm not gonna even try. Um, and then the other thing is that succulents have different types of colors. Even within uh, itself, they have their happy color and their stressed color. And sometimes they're the color when they're stressed, they look pretty vibrant as well. Like for instance, this is a gold tooth aloe and this is its stress color. It's got hints of orange. When it's not stressed, it's entirely green, and these um, the teeth here is a golden yellow. We have some sedum down here, and this is one type. This is a this is another type of sedum. Back that way, these are called string of pearls. This is a crassula, and um, it was neat to to find it blooming this year. When it, when it was originally planted, it was this big. Didn't think it would get uh, bigger than, than, than that size, but um, we've since discovered how big they get. This is its pup, so we can separate it and plant it um, elsewhere if we like. Here are some uh, aloe, and this is the stressed color. And I mentioned earlier that one of the draws of succulents is the many different types of ornate and interesting pots that you can put them in. And this is very standard um, right now. And these two were separated from a, from a different, from a bigger aloe. Down here is a baseball plant. It's, it's a pretty neat specimen and you can tell their gender by their flower and I I haven't um, really gone and tried to differentiate this plant. Let's, let's stick my finger in there for size comparison. Uh, this guy's been with us for at least six years now. We got him at a farmer's market. Here's another succulent here, and it makes these really pretty um, flowers that look like dandelion flowers. This is a gastira. They make flowers, and the shape of the flower, they look like the, um, the shape of a stomach. That's why they're called gastira. Here's some, some, um, some more aloe. The interesting thing about succulents is that they have very unique looking foliage shapes and form but when they flower, all the flowers look very similar. So that's kind of a contrast to 
many of the bulb plants, like for instance your tulips and other bulb plants. Well, all the tulips and the bulb plants, they have very similar looking leaves and foliage, but when they flower, they have very unique flowers. So it's a very, very um, interesting com uh, contrast. This is a mosaic aloe. And uh, it's a very got really nice variegated form to it. We have some more uh, sedum. And I, I passed the donkey's tail. Here's some donkey's tail. Um, back there is a Euphorbina. I think it's a common name is Tanzania zipper cactus. And then we got some Horworthia back there. And this down here, um, there are more uh, aloes. These are, I believe, uh, lizard lips. And we have many, many plants now. It started off with one or two, and, and it's been here for maybe three, four years now. And if we wanted to separate them out and get individual plants from them, we can. Um, here is some dried up. Um, I think these are uh, Eshavisha. I can never pronounce that because I can't um, think of the spelling in my head to be able to pronounce it. And this is um, another succulent. And it's, been, it's since been dried up. And I'm kind of disappointed about this one because like the baseball, this was purchased with the baseball plant a few years to ago and it became a, a father and made these little pups on the side. And we, and we were really excited about that. But um, somehow this, this little portion here, it got fried. We had some very intense sun this year and it seems like there was some kind of death ray that just came this way and just took out plants that are in this area. Here is um, a fire stick. These plants get really, really big. And you can start them from we started from just one of these branches and stuck it in the soil there and it became this plant. This took about three years to go from uh, this into this large plant. Here's, here's another gold tooth aloe again. Um, and I never looked up what the name of this plant is. Um, and then this is um, one of the newer ones and it makes really pretty flowers. This is some, some of its stress colors. So where, where it's orange, um, that's where the sun hits it. And back here where the sun doesn't hit it, it's, uh, it's not orange. So this, this is, a, I would call this a chameleon cactus if I was ever to name a cactus. But this is not called a chameleon cactus. Um, it turns from green to brown uh, to orange to yellow, depending on what kind of sun and light it gets. So, and it also makes these really pretty flowers, and it's been flowering quite a bit um, this year. So, I, I'm trying to find a good place for him to go in and and be in the ground. Um, he's got thorns on on him, so. One of the uh, rules of this planter is to make sure that there's not thorny plants because we have kids that may get in here and hurt themselves. So um, that's why I'm having a personal debate about whether to break that rule or not and plant them down here. Um, this one is a bear's paw, one of the earlier succulents that called this place its residence. It's got these really cool um, bear paw looking like foliage. They're not easy to propagate. So I've since, because there's so much, this is, there's so much water. This is mostly water. When you, when you break it off, it just dries up. And, and um, so the, so propagation is kind of difficult. I'm guessing um, you cut it, cut one of these hard stems off and stick it in ground and propagate it that way. Um, this one, this feels like, this feels like a um, 
cow tongue. And I can't remember if this is what it's called, a cow tongue or not. We have some other types of succulents there. Back there, they remind me of dill pickles. A bunch of these. Um, the prickly guy in the pot back there, this is from my wife's um, maternal grandma's collection. And the thing about plants is they're also a good uh, way to remember your loved ones by. We have some more that I don't know the name of, like this one. This one down here is a special succulent. And this one came off of my wife's wedding bouquet. She likes to dry out bouquets and, and such. And um, I was surprised to find this a couple years later in her bouquet. And it wasn't all dried out. So I thought, hey, why don't I stick it in the ground, see what happens. And sure enough, it rooted and it's alive. So succulents are a great way to um, remember people and events by. So we have this from her wedding bouquet. And then um, we'll just skip that section real quick and come back later. And we have this from our wedding table uh, floral arrangement. And um, so if anybody who's uh, setting up their um, wedding, if you include some succulents in your centerpiece, you'll have some guests who are into plants and they will take that succulent and plant it and they'll they'll remember your special day by because we've had relatives who who comment and say hey we have your succulent from your centerpiece so that's one way to use succulents <coughs> um, back there is a pine cone cactus and it looks like a pine cone so when, when, um, when we had it, it was just this little piece here, and this year it made this second piece. So it'll get taller and taller, and it'll, it'll look really cool then. Um, that's why it's in the back, because it's going to get pretty tall. Um, there is a jade plant, and this is probably internet famous for being a plant that you can't kill. So you can you cut off a piece of the plant, put in a pot, and whether you water or not, it will just um, stay alive. And that's one of the things about when we go and do maintenance on these, on this uh, succulent planter is anything that we take out, we generally throw straight into the compost bin um, rather than throw it on the ground because it'll turn into live plants. This is a crown of thorns. This came from um, my wife's collection. She's not. She's not a gardener. Uh, she's. She got. She got this a long time ago. Was, I think at a farmer's market or a fair, and, and she's had it ever since. And we we put it here. Um, this is another aloe. I can't remember the name, and it's nice and dark brown, almost purplish. And this is um, this is back here in the shade. Some aloe actually prefer shade, um, and that includes succulents. So that's one of the things that people probably um, don't know about succulents, which including yours truly had to discover that that they don't like sun. Some of them, many of them don't like direct sun and would prefer uh, indirect light. Some more crown of thorns, and this is the aloe vera. And we're coming down this way to uh, um, <coughs> some sedum. So this, this one is really cool. It's mostly water. They're like water balloons. You break off one, and um, it's just all water in there. We have an, uh, more sedum back there. And here's the other plant again. I wonder if I'm confusing the jade plant between, um, I'm pretty sure this is the jade plant and not, 
and not this one. Uh, here we have some um, some more succulents. This is also part of the Crusula family. And back there we have um, a succulent onion. And it's made some pups here. And I think uh, I think this is a voodoo plant in some some Asian cultures. I think this is people would uh, they would um, crack eggs or leave eggs by the plant to feed it. But I think they do that for some kind of voodoo purposes. So it's kind of creepy. And that's our succulents that are growing in here. We'll take a one quick walk through and then we'll go and put together our potted arrangement. This is my late father's mocajete. He had two of them and this was his first one. I think he didn't like how coarse the um, surface was and um, he never really used it. But I recently, I think it was this year that I took it and use it as a um, succulent pot. And in here we have some, um, these are some uh, Hawathia, uh, and then we have another type of Hawathia, and this is a um, ox tongue. No, this is a um, Gastera. These things are really, really pointy and hard. Um, we have this uh, cactus here that has since died, and then we have another one. This was this one that's uh, died and shriveled is one of the um, premium cactuses. I think it's from it was from Peru and unfortunately it, it died in here so it's kind of sad about that. We have some sedum here and um, some donkey tail. So we're gonna make a larger version of that in this um, pot here. One of my favorite tools for um, maintenance of the succulent planter is this hori hori knife. It's a Japanese gardening um, tool. It's basically uh, got a sharpened edge here and then it's got a serrated edge on this side and this is really nice to go in between the plants and cut them. Um, I also have some pruners just in case for the thicker um, plants but normally for most of the work that I do in here this this is a really nice tool I can dig and I can also uh, separate plants this is pretty neat just clearing out this dill pickle one we discovered that it makes these really neat dark red flowers that's pretty cool so in here we have um, some sedum this is an uh, Echavesha from the front yard garden, a little tiny one. She likes the purple one. I don't have any other healthier looking ones, so um, hopefully that one will be happy. And I'm going to put together this arrangement um, quickly as it's getting darker and colder now. Um, and hopefully, hopefully it'll look nice when we're done. Uh, once again, I'm not very artistic. I'll try my best to make it look nice. In these types of arrangement, as opposed to the planter, the key is to get them all packed in nice and tight together. With our finished succulent uh, arrangement, we'll end our episode here. And until the next one, thanks for watching. And we'll see you then.